Here's your disclaimer. I ain't giving you a disclaimer. You stuck with me. That's how it works. Amen? The Lord's been talking to me about value for weeks now. Like in everything. I can't get away from it. And so as I've, as I've sought into the Lord about what all he wants to teach me in that, what all he desires for me to hear, he, as it's defined this way, value is worth, merit, usefulness. He told me, Julie, the only thing in this world that has value is people. That's right. That's right? right? Yeah. We hear it all the time. The only thing that we can take with us is souls. Is that true? Right. But if we don't feel valued, it leads to confusion, depression, lack of self-confidence, and abuse. Right? Amen. Proverbs 11.30 says, The fruit of the righteous is the tree of life, and whoever captures souls is wise. That is biblically true. But here's what I'm finding. Listen, I love souls. I love soul winning. I really don't think there's a whole lot more important than that. I believe that that's why Jesus came on top of the fact that he sets us free from everything that holds us in bondage. But if we only live to catch the next soul, then we're missing the picture. We're only surviving. We're not thriving. Listen, I lived in this cycle a circular pattern for years. I'm using souls as an example, but it can happen in any arena of your life. Yeah. Let me give you some examples. How about this one? Woohoo! It's Thursday. I only have one more day of work. Right? We're just waiting for the next good thing. I only have two more years till my kid graduates. I only have 342 days till my next vacation. I only have this. I only have that. Everything in life is I am not satisfied with where I am. I am believing that my joy and fulfillment comes in my next advancement step. That's right. Here's the problem. How about if we look at exactly where we are and see the value in it? That's good. What about if we look at the people around us and see the value in them? Yeah. Yeah. Or here's the hard one, I think. How about if I stop, look at the word of God as a mirror, as the Bible tells us to, and see the value that he's put in me? It would change our point of view on everything. I was spending time with the Lord. And all of a sudden, he showed me this lineup of prisoners on death row. Just one after another, after another, after another. And I knew they were on death row. And I know that the only reason somebody would be on death row is because they've taken the life of another. Correct? And God said, Julie, do you know what's different between you and them? And let's be honest. I said, good Lord, I hope there's a whole lot different between me and them. <laughs> and he said, there's one main difference. And I said, okay, God, what's, what it, what's the difference? He said, whether it be for a long period or whether it was for a split second, every one of those people forgot that the other person that they harmed had value. That they were a creation made in God's image. That their life was important. There isn't anybody under the sound of my voice. There isn't anybody in the city of Richmond. There isn't anybody who has ever been created by the Lord that does not have inherent value. Amen. Amen. We can look at those people on death row and we can think, man, can't believe it. We can be judgmental, 
right? But we do it all the time. I do it all the time. I'm working on it. But if I see somebody doing something unwise, I pass judgment. I forget the value. You guys saw it all the time, didn't you? But those people were precious. I'm telling you, there is a key to our success in forwarding the kingdom of God by seeing the value in the people around us. Okay? Follow along with me. But here's the next thing God told me. This is how God talks to me. I was putting on my mascara. Come on, ladies, y'all know how it is. And he says, just like that, Julie, a gem has as much value as a gemstone. And I said, what? And he said, a gem has as much value as a gemstone. And being the incredibly submissive, unquestionable woman of God that I am, I said, God, I don't think that's true. <laughs> I don't. Come on. Do you know the difference? A gem stone is a is a gem that is untouched. It's raw. It's jagged. It's not been polished. It's not been buffed. It's covered with trash and debris. It's just in its raw form. A gem is what we put in jewelry. It's what we beautify. It's what shines. And so, I went and looked it up, as any person would. Because yeah. I, I didn't know that I agreed with God. But you know, lo and behold, he was correct. <laughs> I know it's a big surprise, but he was 100% right. There is absolutely no difference in value. Not one iota of an ounce of difference. And I was blown away by that concept. It doesn't matter if it's been buffed, grinded, polished, cut, and put in a pretty fancy ring. Or whether it's sitting in a pile with debris. Do you know when we realize it's value? When it's found. When it's tapped into. When you hit the vein that that thing comes from. That's when we realize the value. But it's had value since the moment it was created. Amen. You have to understand that you and I are exactly like that gemstone. We were made in God's image. From the point you were created, you were created with value. And Psalm 139, 13 says, He formed you inside your mother's womb. He knit you together. He made you exactly the way He desired you to be. Nothing. Say it. Nothing. Nothing can change the value of the gemstone, and nothing can change the value of us. Amen. He made us valuable all by himself, and we cannot add, we cannot take away, we cannot change the value that he's put in us. But there are a few things I want to focus on that change our perception of value. So we understand nothing, right? Nothing can take away or change our value. But dirtiness or filthiness only seeks to cover up our value. I was in real estate for a very short time. <laughs> and when I was in real estate, there was a couple who was divorcing. The woman stayed in the house. The man had moved out. They went to court, and they were, they were told that they had to split everything amicably. So they had to sell the house. Well, weeks went by, and that house hadn't sold. And it was a beautiful house. 
It was a seller's market. There's no reason why it shouldn't have sold. So the man went to his real estate agent and he said, what is going on? Why isn't it selling? So the real estate agent went to the other real estate agents and said, what's going on? And they said, every last one of them said, when we go in that house, it's trashed. She has put sauerkraut on the counter. There is clothes all over the floor. There's dirty stuff all over the, the kitchen. The bathrooms haven't been scrubbed. Why? Because she was attempting to cover the value of the house. But it didn't change the value of the house. It didn't change it. It didn't change it one iota. But we do this. We do it all the time as well. We don't do it in, in uh, dirt and filth. We put up walls around our heart. Is that true? We think we're too dirty. We think we're too used, too broken. That the things that we've done, the choices that we made make us, make us worthless and stop us from being something beautiful. We separate so others can't see in. But Romans 5, 8 says, But God shows his love for us in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Even in my worst state, when every decision I made was trash, when everything I did should have brought my value down, he gave it everything just to buy me and he gave everything just to buy you right John 3 16 says for he so loved the world that he sent his only begotten son that if we believe in him we will not be perished and we will not be put to shame but we will live forever with him Amen. the second point Amateurs, opinions don't determine your worth. Yeah. That's right. Come on. It is only God's opinion that counts. Amen. Listen, you can put a huge bin of diamonds mixed with, what are they called? Cubic zirconia. And ask me to separate them. And I wouldn't know to. I don't know the difference. I'm just looking for something shiny. Right? I don't I don't give a flip about what the value in somebody else's eyes are. But there's an expert looking and they're looking for quality, clarity, light reflection, and all sorts of things. They look even within the stone. But here's the final way to test the value of a stone. To find out if a gem is real, it has to be exposed to extreme heat. A real gem, when exposed to extreme heat, will not change at all. But a fake gem, or a gem with imperfections, it will point out its weak point. Proverbs 17, 3 says, The refining pot is for silver and the furnace is for gold, but the Lord tests the heart. We will be purified at some point. Every last one of us. We can do it now willingly, or we can be sent to an eternal fire. As my husband says, you choose fire now, or you choose fire later. But everybody's going to face the fire of God. Every last one of us will face the refiner's fire to test where we are. Amen. That's right. One is for building up, and one is for destroying. Wow. Yeah. Number three, beauty is in the eye of the beholder. <laughs> right. This is my wedding ring. Well, it's actually my second wedding ring. But you get the point. Same marriage. Second ring. <laughs> <laughs> to me, this ring is priceless. Amen. It's rare. It's the only one of its kind. Not a single one of you have it. 
Because it was bought just for me. It represents the covenant that Aaron and I have. It represents the highs. It represents the lows. And it represents everything in between. I'm sure there are people who have more shiny, bigger, more costly rings. And I wouldn't want them for anything. Because they don't represent my love for him. Only my ring does. In Luke 21, it talks about, I'm going to read it, well, a portion of it. It says, Jesus looked up and saw the rich putting their gifts into the offering box. He saw a poor widow put in two small copper coins, and he said, truly I tell you, this poor widow has put in more than all of them, for they all contributed out of their abundance. But she gave out of her poverty all that she had to live on. Those people may not have seen the widow's heart, but Jesus did, and he revealed it to everyone willing to listen. Isn't it just like Jesus? He don't run his mouth about us, but he sure does speak to uplift and encourage us. He's so proud of every one of his children. He's amazing. But he always sees the heart. Four. In order for something or someone to really step into their full potential, you have to be in the right location. There's a story about a young girl whose dad gave her a car that had been sitting in a barn for years and years and years. She had grown up watching that car become decrepit in the bar. And he said, honey, for your graduation, I'm going to give you that car. Well, she didn't want that car. That car was old and stinky and probably had mice in it. And he said, you can do whatever you want with it. So she took it to a car dealership. And they laughed in her face. They said, that car is not worth anything. It'll be your blessing for us to get rid of it. So she went home, totally deflated. And she said, Dad, the car isn't worth anything. And he said, Honey, I want you to go next week. There's a car club in town. And I want you to take the car to that car club. She said, Okay. Why? He said, Just trust. So she took it to the car club and she pulled in and there's all these older gentlemen. Come on, you know how it is. They have pristine cars that they have done up to the hill. They're in amazing shape. They are prouder than peacocks walking around their cars, talking about their cars. And everybody stops when she pulls in. And she thought, uh-oh, maybe I shouldn't have come. But when they came closer, they started saying, where did you find this beauty? This car is amazing. It's priceless. I'll give you anything you want for it. The same car that the dealership said was trash, these men said were priceless. It depends where you're located. If you're in the wrong place, your value may not be identified. Wow, wow, wow. That's so good. Five, you will never, ever fool God on where you stand. When I was a kid, this was part of when the Lord woke me up in the middle of the night. This was part of what he told me. He reminded me when I was little, it was my job, it was my honor, to be really honest. To roll all the coins. You know back when we paid in cash for things? Oh, I love to roll the coins. And so, for one of my birthdays or Christmas, I got this really intricate coin separator. And I'm telling you, I thought I was the head of the biggest bank in the United States. (laughs) It's true. And so I put my coins in, right? And this one coin kept getting kicked out. I looked. I thought it's a quarter. What? What's going on? So I put it back in. It 
got kicked out. Put it back in, got kicked out. Pulled it out, pulled out another quarter. It looked the same size, it was the same shape, but it wasn't American. I don't know what it was, I can't remember now. But I remember thinking, it's close enough. <laughs> right? But you know, no matter how hard I tried, that corn sorter wouldn't take it. You may be able to fool everybody around you, but you will never fool God. Amen. Matthew 25 tells us that God will separate us, sheep on one side and goats on the other. In this world, we love to talk about the goats. Come on, what's it stand for? Greatest of all time. Greatest of all time. You hear it in all the sporting events. Oh, he's the goat. He's the goat. He's the greatest of all time. But you know, those aren't the ones that God's looking for. He's looking for the sheep because he's the good shepherd. Last point. Being misplaced or lost doesn't decrease an item's power or value. It just puts its power in the wrong hands. Romans 11.29 says, For God's gifts and his call are never can never be withdrawn. Using your giftings for the wrong purpose is using them in a way God never intended. Drug dealers have incredible sales skills. Is that true? Yeah. Yeah. You know what else they make? Incredible evangelists. Because they can sell hope like nobody else. Yeah. How about pimps? I know we don't like to talk about this stuff in church. But it's real. It's real, isn't it? You know what pimps are? They're gatherers. They bring people in. They make them feel safe, even though it's in a twisted form. And then they place them where they feel they should be. You know who else does that in a righteous way? Pastors do that. One gifting can be used for his glory, or it can be used for the demise of man. Those giftings can be used for darkness and thrive because the word of God says they're without repentance. When God gives a gift, he gives it with no strings attached. Have you had this? Hey, Perry, I want to give you $50. You know what I think you should do with that? Come on. We do it. You know God never does that? Ever. Ever. He gives it to you as a free gift because he never, ever wants to make the choice for you. His heart is always that you would choose him. But here's the, here's the kicker. I'm telling you, when I heard this, I just about jumped out of my skin. It only takes one exposure to God's light to change things. The way photography used to happen was in a dark room, right? But you know, nothing beautiful ever came out until it was exposed to sunlight. Yeah. A picture would have never been developed had in that dark room light hadn't shone forth. So why does it matter? You can walk out of here and think, yeah, why does it matter? You have had value since you were a thought in God's mind, but we cannot live to our full potential until we tap into the only true source. Amen. Come on. That's the truth. John 15, 5 through 8. I am the vine, and you are the branches. The one who remains in me, and I in him, bears much fruit. For otherwise, apart from me, that is, cut off. <laughs> from vital union, you can do nothing. If anyone does not remain in me, he is thrown out or broken off like a branch and withers and dies. And they gather those branches and throw them into the fire and they're burned. 
There again. Fire now or fire later. If you remain in me, my words remain in you. That is, we are vitally united. And my message lives in your heart. Ask whatever you wish and it will be done for you. My Father is glorified and honored by this. When you bear much fruit and prove yourselves to be my true disciples. God made us for his pleasure. He desires for us to be with him. He desires for us to love him. We were created to worship him. And it is only in fulfilling those roles will we ever be fulfilled. But first, you have to connect to the vine.